But I also found freedom eventually from neoconservatism, which I did not even know I belonged to. I just knew I belonged to the non-leftist group of people. And then I came across Murray Rothbard, and I came across some other folks who were telling me that these people are imposters. These aren't real conservatives. These people are fakes. What, do they want to spread human rights and democracy around the world? What, what, what is this, the French Jacobins, and I'm supporting that? What in the world is conservative about this? What's the matter with you? This is crazy left-wing utopianism. You don't support that. You're supposed to believe that this is a fallen world with finite possibilities and not say, well, we could bring feminism to Afghanistan just at the point of a gun. That, that can't happen. That's not happening. <coughs> there is not one conservative aspect of any of that. And little by little, I came to this conclusion. I came to the conclusion that if they're lying to me about milk subsidies, they may also be lying to me about the foreign policy. <laughs> I came to that conclusion. And I remember gradually coming to feel like there's a lot of death associated with the U.S. empire, and I'm pretty sure as a conservative who believes in absolute moral standards, I'm supposed to speak out about that. And I'm not supposed to be a moral relativist who says, well, look, if it's the U.S. doing it, they must have a good reason. I, that, this, there's no manual of moral theology that includes that principle. And so I began thinking and rethinking, and I was exposed to good people, thank goodness, once again. I just knew something was wrong. And I just came to the conclusion that the state is the locus of sociopathic behavior in the world, both domestically and foreign. <laughs> in fact, one of my favorite memories of all time was shared with this guy right here, Michael Bolden, back in 2011. You remember what I'm talking about? It was at one of his conferences. It was in Los Angeles. And it was a group of a very diverse group of people in the audience, and some of them were m military veterans, even of as recently as the uh, Operation Desert Storm from 1990. I saw people wearing hats, uh, 1991, wearing hats from that. And I was giving a talk about what's wrong with, you know, government and all that, and so I talked about Obamacare and a lot of different things, and I had everybody with me. But I had to say something about foreign policy, and I knew I was going to lose some of them, but I thought, what would Rothbard do in this situation? Would he say, well, I'm in a group of people where some people aren't going to like what I say, so I'll just find a lowest common denominator speech and deliver that one. And because I'm not Rothbard, I was briefly tempted to do that, I'll be honest with you. But then I said, you know, what's the point of building up capital with people if you don't then blow it? <laughs> so what I did was, you can find this, it's, it's Nullify Now Los Angeles Woods. If you type that in, those terms on YouTube, you'll find it. But in those last moments, I said, look, in the 1990s, a lot of innocent people died. And you can say, oh, it was all an accident. We didn't intend that. But they died through uh, totally inhumane sanctions that no, no conservative worth his salt could possibly have supported. And the, the figures are just mind-boggling. Now, I've been told, oh, well, you can't trust the UN figure that 500,000 Iraqi children died of malnourishment. or whatever. You can't trust the UN. But whether I can trust the UN or not, Madeleine Albright trusted the UN because when she was asked, what do you think about half a million dead children, she said, we believe the price is worth it. She didn't say, oh, that's a phony baloney figure. So in other words, even if that had been the absolute undisputed figure, she was, well, you know, it's okay. No, that's, that's deranged. Normal people don't talk or think that way. Now, if those kids had died in an earthquake or some other kind of natural disaster, everybody would be all tears and pity about it. But they were among the the subjects of the two-minute hate. We weren't supposed to like that country because we didn't like the guy running it, so therefore we don't like any of the people either. Total leftist view, by the way, that the people in the government are indistinguishable. Why are conservatives going for that? I don't know. It's, it's a disease, neoconservatism. And so I said to that group, look, you, are, you people are better than this. How could you let yourselves get caught up in propaganda like this? If you saw somebody in the Soviet Union making excuses for the Kremlin like this, on the basis of no evidence, on the basis of totally ridiculous war propaganda, you'd laugh at them. Well, the whole world is laughing at you right now because you've been had by some of the worst people in the world. 
and you are the same people who lecture the rest of the world about moral relativism, shame on you. Wake up. So I did that. Freedom from neoconservatism. That's all you have to do. All you have to do is read a few books, you're free. You're out. You've escaped. <laughs>